Here in California, we're home to some of the most beautiful bodies of water in the country, from the lakes and streams in the Sierra, all the way down to the coast. But amongst that beauty, there's a problem lurking below the surface. Abandoned boats are sinking quietly across California, taking fuel and other harmful chemicals down with them. Others are drifting away from marinas, crashing into the shore, scattering plastic and fiberglass into the water. Many wrecks sit there for days, months, even years. As a society, we don't accept people abandoning their cars on the side of the road. We have a program to remove those vehicles. But for boats, it's, it's like our, our plan is to just let them accumulate along the edges of jetties and marinas and shorelines. In California, we don't even know how many boats are out there. Estimates put it anywhere between 650 and 750,000. The boating licensing registration system is ridiculous. For one, registering a boat, unlike a car, is only required every two years in California. And license enforcement on the water is practically non-existent. If you walk into any marina, it's not hard to find unlicensed vessels or vessels that have uh, old faded CF numbers. And it's not like the state doesn't know. According to comment from the California Division of Boating and Waterways, many people fail to register boats purchased secondhand. So, often by the time a boat washes ashore, the owner's long gone. There's a lot involved with trying to track down owners, and to tell you the truth, a lot of the times we cannot find them. So you can see this vessel here and the moss on the vessel. This is a clear indication that the vessel is not being properly maintained and the owners haven't visited it in quite some time. So th these are a concern. That brings us to the second part of this problem. A lot of these vessels are covered in chemicals and, and sealants and stuff like that that are designed to prevent life from occurring. And what happens when they sink or they're left out in the environment too long is they slough those contaminants into the environment. And they're not water soluble, so they stay there. Once underwater, the diesel and battery acid these boats carry on board is absorbed by the plants and animals in the ecosystem. And it doesn't take long to work up to humans as well. So it's important not only to get all of these vessels out of the water, but to get them out quickly. Without a comprehensive system in California, prevention often falls to nonprofits like SF Baykeeper, a group of Bay Area lawyers and scientists who patrol looking for environmental threats. So this is basically what a, a boat looks like before it becomes completely unusable and starts sinking. So it does, it does not have a hull number on it. I, right. My guess is those are illegal stickers. Probably taken from another boat. Without knowing who a boat belongs to, it's hard to hold someone accountable for the costs. And those costs aren't cheap. To remove a sunken vessel can cost anywhere from fifty dollars to $200,000 for a typical recreation boat. And with the number of boats rising, not only in California, but nationwide, there's an expensive problem sitting out on the water. I mean, at some point, there's going to be a critical mass of, of mess, and these things all need to get cleaned up. This is where we actually have a solution ready to go. In 2020, abandoned and derelict boat experts from across the West got together and wrote this. They call it the Blue Ribbon Report. Basically, it says everyone needs to be more like Washington. For one, Washington's established a database of all the vessels that they're concerned about. This way, they can avoid surprises. It'll show where a lot of these problem areas may occur, and then you can allocate resources for like on-water enforcement into those high-density areas where there's a lot of problems. Second, they've passed laws giving Troy's office authority and funds. We try and do as much as we can with as little as we have. Prevention is always cheaper than us having to go out and remove a vessel after it sank or beached itself. That brings us to the third thing. They've established a VTIP, or a voluntary turn-in program. Vessel owners who no longer can take care of their vessels can turn them into our program for free disposal. And that's no cost to the owner. In California, we've got a turn-in program, but it's underfunded and less than a dozen counties statewide participate. Or it's like you're trying to complete a jigsaw puzzle and half your pieces are missing. We're making strides, but to sink this problem for good, we've got to adopt more from the Blue Ribbon Report. 
that exists, that document exists. Any legislator could pick up that document and it has a menu, it's a cookbook of good legislation is what it is. So no, no one has an excuse to say, we don't know what the problem is and we don't know how to fix it because we've done that research.